Hi again, everyone. Eric Faust of Camper Tax. Hey, I see that you made the decision to join us. Congratulations. You're on your way to a phenomenal journey. But before you embark upon that journey, we need to talk about a few things. And the first thing is you can't fix a camper without tools. Well, let's start with the number one tool. That's right. The number one tool resides in here. And remember that, because that tool will be your best friend. So, anyhow, fixing RVs can be complicated. It can be easy. Anything from a microwave, installing a microwave, or say, hey, there's an igniter on a stove. By the way, this is my camper. I thought I'd let you know that I do live the RV lifestyle. Okay. Back to work. Refrigerator. All this stuff. A little bit of common sense, a little bit of training that I'm going to give to you. Hey, you can fix this stuff. But then you think, well, what tools do I need? Now, come on, we would all love to have a snap-on van back up into our driveways, have the driver I get these tools around. Anyhow, I carry this around. So if I make mobile calls or whether I'm on my golf cart or not, it's easy to carry pretty portable and it's somewhat lightweight. Now let's talk about some of the tools that you're going to need. Now keep in mind that I, if you invest probably in the neighborhood of $300 you can get a tool kit that's going to work. Let's start off. And in this, not, this isn't going to be in any particular order. This is just the tools of importance that you will need with you on a daily basis. For one thing, wire strippers. Uh, I actually have two sets of them. Critically important because you have AC and DC wiring in these coaches. We will get into how the wiring split up at a later date. But again, wire strippers, hey, they're not that expensive. Um, the other thing, the universal tool that I've always loved, vice grips. You wouldn't believe how many how many applications are that these can be used on you can use them as a hammer you can use them as pliers you can use them as a screwdriver i, I tell you i won't go anywhere without these let you in on a little secret i'm holding up the video camera with para uh-huh so these are invaluable make this your number one tool you're going to want a good set of sockets you know you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive, let's say, and I'm going to use their brand name just because everybody knows it, but like Snap-on. Hey, they make an excellent socket, but we all know they are incredibly expensive. You know what? This came right from Harbor Freight. Went down Harbor Freight bottom. They're cheap. And you know what? They work. Harbor Freight makes decent tools. You don't have to spend a fortune and they will get the job done. Always keep sockets. Keep a driver with you. Uh, keep a swivel and an extension, and you're going to be able to get to the, even the most tight areas that you normally wouldn't be able to get to, perhaps, with these. So always keep sockets on hand. Keep metric and SAE, because more campers now are going to metric. It used to be all SAEs. It was easy. Well, it's not that way anymore. So sockets, driver, extensions, swivel. Remember that. Um, I just happen to have this in there. Uh, I have used this quite a few times. Uh, it's a rivet gun. You know, it's probably something that you're not going to use that often, but you know what? Keep it in mind. Keep it in your toolbox. Again, something you can carry around. That's important. Another thing, a stapler. Look, you know, there are going to be times you're going to be removing trim. Uh, I can't show you the slide right now because I can't get it. Well, I mean, I... You're going to be taking slide faces off. You're going to be taking cabinetry faces off. You've got to nail that back in. I bought this aero stapler that will handle T50 staples, and it will also shoot brads. It's a dual purpose. Bang, 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 bang. Look, it's not powered by anything. You don't have to worry about a battery. It's simple to use. Get one. They're cheap. Well, relatively speaking, they're cheap, but they're going to fill a lot of voids. So that's important. Um, you know, another thing, a uh, crescent type of wrench or, 
you know, any type of locking pliers, again, like the vice grips, but a lot of times you work with these in tandems, especially in plumbing applications. It never hurts to have two pairs. And I have two different pairs because they work in conjunction with one another. Uh, the other thing, and this is going to go into our safety program, but you want to have gloves. Uh, I have burnt, cut, and singed myself on wiring, plumbing, sharp edges. Get a good pair of gloves. Keep them in your toolbox. Another thing, look, your customers, you're a professional. Your customers expect to be treated by a professional. You don't want to walk through mud and claw it into their camper, messing their floor up. Invest in footies. These things go right over your shoes, and you can walk around the camper. When you're done, you take them off and throw them away. Wise investment, and it's also good for your customer relations and customer retention. You want those customers to be happy. You want to leave their unit better than what you walked into. Believe me, that'll make an impression. Another thing, oh, this is invaluable. You're going to be doing a lot of electrical work and a lot of electrical diagnosis. Now, myself, I used to have an expensive one. Oh, well, well I actually still do. But uh, other people, yeah, they kind of like to walk off with it. So I bought me a cheap little volt ohm meter that, hey, you know what? It's accurate. It does the job. And nobody's going to walk off with it. I think it was $8. $8. And it works. I can plug it in right now. It's going to tell me the correct voltage readings. Also, the resistance readings. Amperage. It's got all of that right in here. You can get, you can get them digital or analog like this one is. Hey, you know what? Cheap. Again, you don't have to break the bank. Again, the driver going with the sockets. And, of course, let's talk screwdrivers. You want to get as many screwdrivers as you can. Different type, you know, flathead and Phillips. You want those screwdrivers. You're going you're gonna to use different sizes, different heads, different lengths. Get as many as you can. Again, you can get a whole set of them at Harbor Freight. You can get them cheap. You can get them at uh, Lowe's. You can get them at Menards. You know, it's depending on what you want to put into them. Get a good brand. Don't get something that's, that's going to break on you right away. This is important. Screwdrivers. Now, with that being said, well, we're talking screwdrivers again. More and more and more. Look, different lengths. You know, different heads. RV manufacturers love, love, love. And I've got them in here because I've got them all over the place because I use them all the time. And... Of course, it would make sense that I can't find it, but it's a number two square bit and get a number two square bit with a driver because a number two square bit is what they love to put these things together with. I mean, all the manufacturers do. I don't know what to, maybe they have some type of agreement with them, but I mean, you know what? I can open up these screws. If I were able to zoom in on this, this is a number two square bit. I go in and if I wanted to take my sink faucet off, a number two square bit. You know what? Well, matter of fact, I believe I have one with me, and this is going to lead me to another tool that I wanted to wait till the end of this video, but you know what? I'm going to do it right now. Yes, I've got the square bit right here. This is a number two square bit. This will be your best friend. Get a driver for it, but more importantly, you know what I bought? It's a multi tool. Hey, they're on Amazon cheap. I got this for less than 50 bucks. And I tell you what, I have actually swapped out complete water heaters. I've fixed furnaces. I can't count how many things that I've actually been able to fix with just these. Pulling staples, cutting things. I mean, this multi-tool has all the knife blades because you know you're gonna be cutting stuff. You're gonna be cutting wiring, you're gonna be you're gonna be sawing. Hey, look, you're gonna be sawing wood, you're gonna be opening things, you're gonna be prying things. This has it all. This has everything that you want in it. And this also has the little driver right here. I can put my bits in it, like so. And I can use this, you know, use the torque of the wrench or set it out straight. 
and unscrew or screw it back in this way. Get a multi tool. I tell you, these things are awesome. Carry it on your belt like I do, and, it's, and you're not going to believe how often it will come in handy and how often you'll use it. You may not even go back to this thing because you, you just made a repair using this. And you know what? That makes it more efficient. You know what efficiency means? More profits. Yeah. More profits. Then you can move on to the next job. Get, get this. Do yourself a favor. Uh, this happens to be a Bury. I've had, uh, I've had Sogs. I mean, they, they have them all over the place. Look online. Amazon's a good source. Uh, if you want to go to the hardware store, they have them as well. Everybody carries them. Multi-tools are awesome. Get them. That's, this is going to be one of the most important things that you can carry on. And again, they drop. You know, you can carry them on your, right on your belt. And they're accessible at all times. You need them. Bang, they're there. Okay, let's move on. You're going to do scraping. Whether it's pulling out die core, whether it's scraping flooring. Look, we've put down floor. We just recently put a floor in a motorhome. And we had to scrape the carpet off. We've had to scrape old you know, die core, which is, you know, the self-leveling caulking. We've had to scrape that off, and we've had to work into valleys. Get you a good scraper. Oh, yes. Electrical tape. You won't believe how often you're going to use this. Electrical tape is vitally important. Hey, you know, it's for electrical purposes, right? There is a litany of other things that you can use this with. Always keep that on there. And we'll with you know while we're talking tape hey you know what keep painters tape on you because what you can do is you can trim out an area with this and do your floating die core and we'll get into roof repairs at a later time but again painters tape is cheap keep it on hand oh what else do we have here in the goodie bag yes a flashlight and you know what most phones have flashlights they come in handy but it never hurts to have an, an extra flashlight. This one's got a magnet on it, and it, you know, so you can you can actually stick it to something, hold it on to it, and do your work. They're good to have. They're cheap. Get one. A car, you know, a carpet knife. Look, if you cut out an underbelly, uh, if you're going to cut carpet, you're going to cut a lot of things by using these. The roofing material, EDPN, vinyl. Keep this and a big old supply of blades on hand because you're going to need them. Of course, and I don't have it with me because somebody borrowed it, but keep a hammer. Uh, you know, a ball peen, claw, and um, a rubber mallet. Believe me, there will be applications you're going to want to use for that. Again, a channel lock pliers. They're great to have, along with needle nose and linesman pliers, which I have those in here somewhere. Crescent wrench. Hey, again, this takes up for a lot of other wrenches, so you don't have to carry them around. I don't carry that many wrenches around with me. I carry maybe one of these because this is what, this is the size here. This is an inch and sixteenth. This is how I take out most drain plugs in water heaters. This is really about the open, only open-end wrench that I keep with me because this takes up to 95% of what all the needs are going to need. Remember that. Try to keep as little as you can, but yet as much as you can. Does that make sense? Keep it simple, but yet keep it compact, but yet it's going to be there when you need it. Scissors. You know what? There are going to be times you need scissors. You know, there are all kinds of applications. One to open up packages you buy a new tool or a socket hey this will cut right through that blister pack keep these on you hey you're not hurting anything they don't eat hay another scraper another kind of scraper doesn't hurt to have um, get you know th this is actually uh, this is sold at big block you know big uh, all like you know your Lowe's your Menards etc you know what uh, it, it's it's a it's a copper line cleaner, and it's for soldering, you know, to prep your surfaces for soldering on copper. But you know what? It works great in the RV world, cleaning, cleaning out the oh, the water heaters with the with the plugs, where you know the anode rods and the threads have kind of gotten a little bit uh, boogered up. 
This cleans all that up. It comes in handy. What else do we have? Well, we've got another knife. You know, hey, you can't have too many knives, right? Got socket extensions. Hey, I found another flashlight. What do you know? Can't have too many of those. Again, keep it simple. Another thing you might get, they're cheap. Get a miner's hat flashlight so you can keep both hands free. You know, that's what I've been meaning to do. Um, keep a Sharpie. Keep a pen. You're going to want to write down stuff. You're going to want to mark stuff, especially when you're doing wiring. You've got to remember that stuff. And while I'm thinking about that, while you're doing wiring, while you're doing plumbing, use what I'm talking into now. Use your phone and take pictures before you start your job. Take dozens of pictures. It doesn't matter because you can always refer back to that. I've saved my behind. Behind? Where'd you get on? I've saved my behind many times by having to refer back to pictures because it's like, my God, where did that wire go? And when you get into water heaters that you have, uh, you know, green and yellow, black and red, and a, a couple blue wires in there, same with furnaces, you're going to be glad you had those pictures. You're going to appreciate that. There's a lot of other little junk in here. You know what? Fasteners. Keep fasteners. Self-tapping screws. Uh, you know, again, the the, uh, the square bit screws. Keep those on hand. Machine screws. Wood screws. You know, you don't have to have a bunch of them. Just, you know, what I like to do is you use little pill bottles and put them in there. You put the pill bottles, put them right in your kit, label them. Hey, you've got enough to get the job done. If you need more, you can come back to your central location. So basically, this kind of clears it up, you know, for the, the, the basics of tools. Uh, again, this is going to this is gonna get you through. You know, at least, you know, 85 to 90% of your stuff against lineman, linesman pliers, another crescent wrench. You know what? This gives me a good excuse to clean this out. But that's all you need for right now. Oh, almost forgot. A caulking gun. That's cheap. Get that. Again, these are all hand tools. We'll get into the power tools later. But if you do have to have one power tool, make sure it's a drill driver because you will be doing a lot of drilling. And it does come in handy when trying to loosen stubborn nuts and bolts. And there are a lot of them. You'll be glad you had this. This is what you want. To, this is the one power tool you need to start off with. We'll get into other stuff later on. And I appreciate you hanging with me. And if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. And remember, hey, we're all here to help. We're in this together. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Eric Faust for Camper Tech. Take care.